What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips or techniques on how you can land interviews as a software engineer. That's right, we're not talking about how to prepare for technical interviews in this video, because you know how to prepare for technical interviews. You just use AlgoExpert, my company. Go to algoexpert.io, use the promo code Clem, CLEM for a discount on the platform. We know how to prepare for technical interviews here. What we don't know, however, is how to land these interviews. That is an entirely separate problem, and that's what I'm going to be helping you with in this video. Now, disclaimer, apart from one of the tips and techniques that I'm going to be telling you in this video, none of them are really rocket science or super novel. You've probably heard of them, or at least some of them. However, you should listen to them for two reasons. First of all, it's always good to hear things repeatedly. But second of all, I'm hoping that I'll be able to give you a couple of nuggets of wisdom or key insights that you may not have heard before and that might change the way that you think of some of these tips or techniques that I'm going to give you. So with that, let's jump into it. Tip number one for how you can land interviews as a software engineer. This one is very simple. Apply online. Now wait. I know what you think, I know what you think, you're thinking, Clement, you're a fucking idiot. And I might be, but not because I'm giving you this tip or piece of advice. I know, you think that applying online is just a shot in the dark, recruiters are just gonna ghost you, it's just a waste of time, and trust me, I know, I was there like four years ago when I was applying to all of my jobs, I applied to like 300 plus jobs, I was ghosted by so many companies, I know. However, there are two reasons for which you should apply online. Number one, you never know what'll happen. You never know. When I applied to 300 plus companies and got ghosted by most of them, there were at least two that I did actually end up landing an interview from. Or for example, when I was at Google, there were actually a surprising amount of Google software engineers to whom I asked, hey, how did you land your Google interviews? And they told me, I just applied online. I applied online, and then a month later, a recruiter contacted me, told me that they saw my online application, and they wanted to start the interview process. So the point is, it can happen, you never know. But the second reason for which you should apply online is, some of you might remember this from the video that I made about six months ago with Amy Miller. I did a two-part video with Amy Miller. She was a Google recruiter back then, now she works at Amazon as a technical recruiter, and she said that you should apply online because if you message a recruiter directly, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on in this video, but if you message a recruiter directly either on LinkedIn or by email, it helps them a ton if you've applied to the same company that you're contacting them about online beforehand, because you'll be in their internal system, and that means that they can look you up super quickly, and that just helps them out a lot. It reduces friction and increases the likelihood that they will come back to you positively and want to start the interview process with you. So I'm not a fucking idiot. Apply online. Tip number two, this is the tip that is brand new. You've never heard this tip before, and I know this for a fact because it relates to my company. Company, Algo Expert. Now wait, once again, I know what you're thinking. Oh, this is a marketing ploy, yada, yada, yada. Hear me out. At Algo Expert, we've helped tens of thousands of software engineers prepare for technical interviews. What we haven't helped them with is landing their interviews, because that's a separate problem. This is the entire topic of this video. But what is going on outside? It's literally 4.50 a.m. Why? Go away. Talk about ruining my moment. Okay, the point is, we want to help fix this problem of landing technical interviews on Algo Expert. So this past weekend, we just launched a brand new feature. It's in beta right now. It's an experimental feature where we will try to connect the most qualified candidates on Algo Expert with recruiters at big tech companies. Now you can see on our website what constitutes a qualified candidate. It's basically somebody who gets our certificate or who passes a bunch of our assessments with a particular success rate, but the point is we will try to pair these candidates with recruiters at big tech companies. Now, like I said, this is an experimental feature. We make absolutely no guarantees, so I don't want to get your hopes up, but we really are hoping, and I actually have a pretty high level of confidence, that we're going to be able to crystallize this into one of the best recruiting pipelines or channels for software engineers like you, presumably, uh, who are looking to land technical interviews. And yeah, if you want to join this sort of pilot program, 
especially if you're in the market to prepare for technical interviews, then you know, go check out Algo Expert. And even if you're not in the market to prepare for technical interviews, go check out Algo Expert just out of appreciation for this marketing prowess that I'm exuding right now. But okay, tip number three. Tip number three is also pretty simple, like tip number one, and it's basically contacting recruiters directly, which I hinted at earlier. And for this one, first of all, I would highly recommend that you go check out the videos that I made with Amy Miller, because we talk about this in depth there, and I'll put the links in the description below. But also a couple of tips that I wanna give you here. First of all, you can contact recruiters either directly by email or directly on LinkedIn. Now, I would highly recommend that you strive to contact them by email. The reason being that if you think about it, a recruiter's email is part of their job, right? Presumably they have to check their email as part of their job. So the likelihood that they will actually see your message and you know, open the email and see what you wrote to them is higher if you send them an email than if you send them a LinkedIn message. And I know, for example, that I get you know, tons of LinkedIn messages. And even though I try to check a lot of them, it can be pretty overwhelming. And I'm sure that recruiters get bombarded with a ton of LinkedIn messages. That being said, if you can't find a recruiter's email, then contact them on LinkedIn. Now, how do you find their emails? Well, you can find them on LinkedIn. So it takes a little bit of time, but this is worth the effort. Go on LinkedIn, think of the company that you're looking for, let's say Google or Amazon, and look up on the LinkedIn search bar, Google recruiters or Amazon recruiters, ideally in your location or in a location that you're looking to work at and see if they have their email somewhere in their contact info or you know in their uh, title or you know work description or maybe they have a blog and sometimes they'll have it on their blog or a YouTube channel or a Twitter handle and you can see if you can find it there. Now assuming that you found their email or assuming that you've decided that you're just gonna message them directly on LinkedIn, I would actually recommend that you message multiple recruiters at a time. Because just like with online applications, the more you send out, the more you contact, the more likely you're gonna have one who responds. And I think back to when I was interviewing at Facebook, so when I was already at Google, you know, about a year and a half now, I also tried interviewing at Amazon. And what I did, I didn't actually end up interviewing there. I just said, fuck it, and I'm just gonna go with Facebook. But I started the process. And the way that I did it is I contacted four recruiters for on LinkedIn. And I remember one of them ghosted me or one of them, no, they didn't ghost me. They just didn't reply. And three of them, oh my God, I can't count. Three of them replied. And uh, I remember one of them even told me like, you know, I, I did, I exchanged a couple of emails with her. And then she told me like, hey, Clement, I see that you're already talking to one of my colleagues. I see it through our internal system. You know, I'm gonna close out this application on my end, but you know, you can continue with my colleague. So basically the point is, it doesn't matter if multiple recruiters from the same company answer you. Great, you know, you're in the driver's seat, but at least it'll maximize your chances of getting one to answer you. And as far as what to tell these recruiters, I made a video about a year ago about how I landed my interviews at Google. And in that video, I shared the exact email that I sent my Google recruiters. I also shared that exact same email about two weeks ago on LinkedIn. So I would highly recommend that you just go either watch that video or look at the post on LinkedIn. I'll put both links in the description and the comments below. Don't copy that email verbatim, but you know you can use it as inspiration for the kind of stuff that you want to put. Tip number four is referrals. And for this tip, I'm actually mostly going to advise you not to pursue it. In other words, I'm telling you, don't try to get a referral. And what I mean by that is at big tech companies, I've said this many times before, I'm going to continue saying it many times in the future. But basically at big tech companies and most companies in general, a referral is an actual thing internally. You know, you submit some sort of application internally where you are taking an external person and telling recruiters internally that this external candidate is worth interviewing above many others because you can vouch for them. And so you are asked, how do you know this person? In what capacity do you know them? What can you tell us about them? Why are they really that worth interviewing? And if you can't tell them why, or if you have to tell them that, oh no, you actually don't know this person, then trust me when I say that the referral is worthless. So unless you actually know someone at a company really well, someone who can vouch for you, trying to get a referral from someone at a company is not 
really worth your time. I understand why you're doing it. I get it. You know, I've been in that position, but it's just not worth your time. If you're sending LinkedIn messages to software engineers at Google or Amazon or whatever and telling them like, hey, can you put my resume in front of the hiring manager? It's just it's not going to happen. It's a waste of time. And you, know, you would be better off sending online applications or trying to contact recruiters than doing that. The only exception is sometimes I'll see on LinkedIn, like a software engineer at Amazon, for example, in India, who will say, hey, you know, my team is hiring. And if you email me your resume uh, within the next 24 hours, I will, you know, refer you. And, you know, it's a legit thing. And I guess they've talked with their hiring managers or with the recruiters or whatever. And that is a, a special occurrence. In those cases, that's fine. But otherwise, you know, if they didn't explicitly ask you, just don't waste your time on it. Finally, tip number five. For this one, I'm actually going to bucket a bunch of things under this one umbrella, which I'm going to call networking. And here, what I mean by that is there are a few endeavors or activities that you can pursue, and they tend to be pretty high effort, high energy, they drain a lot of your energy activities that have the potential to increase the likelihood that you will be put in touch with a recruiter or with a job opportunity. So these activities include things like participating in a competitive programming contest, or participating in a hackathon, maybe doing some open source work, or maybe having a YouTube channel, or a popular Twitter handle, or you know, posting a project on LinkedIn. All of these things have a chance, a small chance, to increase you know, your visibility and to put you in touch with the recruiter. Now here, the best piece of advice that I can give you is to use your judgment and really think long and hard if it is worth it for you to pursue these endeavors. Because like I said earlier, they are high effort and they drain your energy and your time a lot. And they are certainly not guaranteed to lead to a job opportunity or to being connected with a recruiter. So unless you already wanted to do these activities, unless you really like doing these activities, I would actually probably recommend that you not do them. Now, if you've never done competitive programming in your life or you hate hackathons, don't just go to a hackathon or to a competitive programming contest for the sake of potentially landing a job opportunity. It's likely not going to happen, and it's likely a waste of time. And also, within those activities, there are some lower effort ones that might be more worth it. Like, for example, you know, sharing your project on LinkedIn, if you've got a cool project, might be good. Like, I, there are a lot of people, you know, in my network who've shared their Pathfinding Visualizer projects or other visualizer projects recently on LinkedIn, and they always tag me. And usually if I see them, you know, I'll react to them, I'll, I'll like them, or even put a comment if they're really impressive. And that sometimes gives them a lot of visibility. Suddenly they'll get like, you know, a thousand reactions on LinkedIn on their project. And maybe that'll slightly increase their chance of landing on a recruiter's LinkedIn news feed. And then when they message that recruiter, that recruiter will remember them and it'll have been, you know, very beneficial. But posting a project on LinkedIn is very low effort compared to contributing to an open source project, for example. So just think long and hard about this fifth uh, tip and whether or not it's something that you want to do. It's kind of like the referrals where I would probably advise you not to do that many of those because it just might be too draining. But some people might disagree with me here because they'll think that this is the, the best way to, you know, it's, it's high effort, but high reward. The question is, how likely is that high reward? Anyway, that's it for me in this video. I really hope that you were able to get some little nugget of wisdom or key insight out of these five tips. I do want to remind you that none of these five tips or techniques, including the Algo Expert one, will guarantee you an interview or a job. There definitely is a luck factor in this, but as with anything that involves luck, the law of large number applies, and the more you do, the more likely you are to land on that one opportunity that actually turns into an interview. So with that, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you enjoy short form written content, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoy pictures, follow me on Instagram, and otherwise I will see you in the next video.